All right, team, so now that we've established a mental framework, let's look at some examples in Excel. And what we're going to do is explore three different examples, tabs one through three, with the third example being perhaps the most traditional private equity distribution waterfall. But we're going to start with tab one and only add a little bit of math each time so that you really understand the sequence. So let's look at what we're going to do on tab one. If this is our ultimate objective, then to get started, what we're going to do to reduce some complexity is eliminate the catch-up and just look at how to calculate the split after we've returned the principal invested and the preferred return to the limited partners. So we'll get started by going to tab one. And at the top under transaction, this is effectively all we're looking at. Below that, under equity participants, we have the GP and the LP, which we've discussed and defined previously. And finally, we have our equity participation terms, which we have described as steps. And we can see that back on our whiteboard, where you can see that steps one and two have been combined into a single line item, return of principal to limited partners plus an 8% cumulative return on principal. And then of course, step three, which is the 80-20 split between the GP and the LP. Below that, you have the IRR hurdle, where we have a preferred return of 8%. So what we need to do is determine what an 8% annualized return from 1231-2020 to 1231-2025 looks like in this example. And to do that, we're using this formula which is the positive value for the capital invested, multiplied by one plus the preferred return, and raised to the number of years between 1231-2020 and 1231-2025. And you can visualize what the function year frac does by highlighting it and pressing F9. Now, should that formula still be a little bit confusing to you, we can look at it here on the tab Formula Explanation. And all we're saying is that if something grows by 8% for five years, then the value at the conclusion of that period is $14,693,281. And below, just to confirm, we have the same formula. So now that we've determined the value of the principal plus the preferred return, we can walk through the first step of our waterfall. So initially, all we're saying is that we want the lesser of two values, being either the total proceeds achieved or the value of the first hurdle. In that way, if you don't have enough proceeds to reach the first hurdle, you will only return that lesser value. And if your proceeds are in excess of the first hurdle, as they are here, then you will only return the first hurdle. Now, before moving on to the second distribution, we need to determine the proceeds remaining. This is a very simple calculation. We look at total proceeds and subtract proceeds distributed in the first distribution. That gives us proceeds remaining. Now, in this first example, all that remains is the 80-20 split. We've already distributed capital invested and the preferred return. So the rest is really pretty easy. You take proceeds remaining and multiply by 20% for the GP. And then for the limited partners, proceeds remaining and multiply by 80%. Finally, in the last step, all we're doing is summing the distributions. So for the GP, we have cash flows distributed under second distribution. And for the limited partners, we have cash flows distributed in the first distribution and in the second distribution. And finally, at the bottom, you'll see that the distributions equal the total proceeds. And with that, we're done with the first example.